Hi there, this is Ben with Primal Lab. Uh, today we are, I wanted to share a little bit about what I call the primal perspective with you. So, um, you know, we are called the Tribal Edge Primal Arts Training Center. And I think what makes our approach what it is, is that uh, whatever we're focusing on, and we are looking at these, these basic, you know, skills of the primal human, um, we, we look at them at a core level, at an essential level, or a first principles level. And, um, you know, it's, that really is what primal means. It, it means original, essential, foundational, or fundamental, um, absolute core, or the essence of something. And that's what we uh, try to do here. And in and, and that kind of approach, what happens is that we get closer to what feels like or what seems to be um, universal truth or kind of this purity that uh, everything else and every other interpretation is built on top of. So, um, and I'll explain a lot of that as we're going along, but I just want to get, get you a sense of where we're coming at with that. So, so, uh, so we have primal, this, this essential, uh, original kind of raw and pure approach and then we have uh, perspective so what is a perspective you know I think everyone has a working definition of what perspective means but if we were to kind of make that a little more powerful um, and distinguish that a perspective is you know we could simply say it is a relationship where it's, it's, let's just start with, it's a place to look from or a, a, a way of looking at something or something you're looking at. Um, it is a, also, you know, to have a perspective, it requires a perceiver and it requires a target and it requires some sort of context or conditions that, that the witnessing is occurring in, you know. It also inclu includes the relationship between those things because you know your relationship if you're the perceiver your relationship between uh, you and a, a tree to use an example is going to uh, highly influence that persp your perspective right and it's going to really influence your perspective if you're in different conditions you know if you are um, wanting to have fun and you see a tree you're going to see kind of the aspects of that tree that can you can have fun with it might be climbing it might be um, hanging on the branches it might be looking at the leaves or, you know whatever um, if you are cold you know you're going to be seeing the tree as a source of fuel and be looking for the dead branches and all that right so the conditions uh, are really going to change your perspective or your relationship to that as well so so we have the perceiver we have the target and we have the context. So um, the perceiver is going to have, of course, as, as the, the perceiver, you're going to have bring along with your perspective all of your uh, beliefs and filters and biases and, you know, and all of that stuff and, and project that essentially unless you have bring it with awareness. But uh, in a way, we can't not project, you know. So you're going to overlay whatever you're looking at um, with basically you you know you're going to see things as you are is how we say it so um and then you have the knowledge of the target you know what's your relationship to that do you have good experiences with it bad experiences do you have any experiences um you know in a way some things could remain hidden or be invisible if you don't have any experience with it because you don't you can't even um pull it out of everything around you you know you don't have a reference for it so um, and then the conditions, as I mentioned. So, so to have a perspective, we have those things. The interesting thing here is that, you know, a perspective, one way I've been thinking about this is like, perspective is like a, a channel that opens up through which you're able to perceive, you know, it's a, it's a constraint or a channel of looking at things in a certain way. And, which is super powerful. It allows us to sort things and to um, 
really connect to things essentially you know because um, what we're doing is an artificial separation where we're, we're artificially separating whatever we're focusing on from everything else for that moment because if you're just in a, a baseline state of connection to everything then there's no way to uh, engage with with any one thing you know you're connected to everything so so to to harness your power and to pour your awareness and your attention into one thing is the power of taking a perspective um, so uh, and, and, uh, and this is what we've done forever as humans t in order to try and solve problems you know when when we're faced with you know basically we're faced with uh, and I'll just give you one of the assumptions that we work off with all of this is is that everything is mystery okay so um, it doesn't mean you can't you don't know things you know it just means that even the things you know or think you know there's more to them there's more perspectives to take there's more backstory there's you know um, all of the relationships with that thing and, and uh, well just to give you a quick example if we talk about again using the tree analogy um, there's no <laughs> there's really no such thing as a tree right and I know that sounds weird and I don't I don't mean we we call things trees we call things things we actually what we're calling tree is a collection of processes and um, patterns that are temporarily organized for a certain period of time and it's a changing pattern it's not a static pattern that's in relatively balanced state for you know 100 years few hundred years however long that tree's going to live so for example if you take all the material that a tree that goes into a tree all the water all the uh, micronutrients you know the minerals the um protein, the cellulose, and you broke those things all down to their constituents and you just piled them up in the, in the field here, <laughs> you know, these big mounds of, of uh, nutrients that a tree you went through in their lifetime, we certainly wouldn't call that a tree. It would be more like a hill or something, you know what I mean? It'd be a pile. Um, we wouldn't recognize it as a tree. We only recognize it as a tree because those things, those constituents are temporarily organized in a certain pattern. Uh, because they're working together um, to accomplish a certain certain processes and obey certain principles okay so um, I know it's a strange way of looking at things it's kind of a com com complexity approach or systems approach to looking at things but uh, it's a it's a really powerful perspective and it it just helps you realize how much more there is to things <coughs> Um, what we call a tree if I just had a tree and you know kind of like if I drew a tree and and you just imagine a tree like a cartoon um, Again, that's not real. You can't have that. You know trees rely on an atmosphere. They rely on water They rely on the earth for soil and, and nutrients, you know They rely on the Sun, which is a star 93 million miles away So so a tree is part of a system that is tree, you know, otherwise there's no functioning that's vast and is usually part of a forest or an ecosystem and you know there's all of the history of that place and, and the seed that it was and it's um, growing up so you know what I'm saying so there's there's um, an artificial distinction of tree We've got some wind coming yeah another pattern right I call it wind um, but winds not a thing <laughs> it is a process so uh, so in that sense you can you can kind of see how everything in the end is just mysterious it just goes on and on and on and so we have these these uh, standard interpretations these working definitions of things that we need we label them so that we can communicate and interact with them um, but to think that those things stop there is a mistake and so so the primal perspective um, when we combine primal and combine perspective what we get is 
a, a way of looking at things from a specific context and a specific level of relationships that is um, fundamental. In fact, it's kind of like the ground floor, you know? It's getting down to um, the core of things in a way that we can't really say much more about it. And the value of doing that is that we get a perspective upon which all other perspectives rest, you know? And they're all built up out of that or on top of that. And so that gives us insight in a way into every other perspective because we have as close as we can get in the mystery of things, as close as we can get to an understanding or a truth about something. So, um, so some of the primal perspectives to save us some time, you know, there's, there's some things that show up at that level of, you know, core being and they're kind of consistent. And, and there's a few things I'm just going to bring up, um, that are in themselves, they're kind of perspectives or ways of looking at something. And one of those levels is what we call principles. And so principles are like these universal constants, you know, um, probably the simplest definition I can think of for a principle is a um, constant causal constraint. Give you some C's to make it a little uh, mnemonic for it. Constant or consistent causal constraints. So a constant is something like in math, you know, a constant is something that remains the same throughout. Um, and the um, causal suggests that it's something that is behind the functioning of things, you know? It's on the causal end of the equation, not the effects end. And so we have this kind of universal, consistent source of functioning. And the constraints, you know, the last part of that, so uh, constant causal constraints, the constraints are uh, limiting or supporting um, parameters that kind of give things structure and allow uh, allow things to be to exist. So, so principles are a very uh, profound level of understanding, and they are essentially, you know, it's a lot of what uh, physics and math spends or science spends a lot of its time um, focusing on is is the principles, the operating principles of things, because they are consistent, they're reliable, they're universal. There's also a, with the causal thing, there's also a, or the constraint thing, there's also a penalty reward type um, uh, relationship that shows up. You know, if you, if you are uh, honoring the principle of balance in your life, you know, it looks a certain way. And when you don't honor the principle of balance in your life, it looks another way. And there's, there's one, one way is in terms of a living creature uh, is life supporting and, and um, sustaining and, and it's rewarding, you know. And the other way, the imbalance leads to uh, disruption and leads to pain and leads to suffering and, and kind of penalty. So, all right, so that's principle. Another uh, kind of uh, attribute that shows up at the primal level is the is what we just refer to as process. So, process is a unfolding or a development over time in a certain direction, and it usually leads to a more and more complex state of being in something. So. Because we don't just have static events, uh, we don't have, you know, everything is moving and we can sense that. And we, we perceive that as time, you know, and everything's in this uh, open, uh, spiraling, unfolding, you know, process, right? And it's, everything's in the process of becoming something else. And that's, that's what I'm referring to. So we can, we can sense the motion, even though we all have, all we have is this current moment, but we still sense this, you know, moving through time thing and we see things change and so process, noticing process, is the kind of the subtle nature of things. You know, it's looking at things like I mentioned the tree. You know, it's looking at um, things in terms of, of flows and, and patterns and networks and relationships. So it's, it's, it is a systems thinking kind of direction, 
of, of focus and it reveals a lot of it makes a lot of sense in our um, incredibly complex world that we live in when we when we look at things in that level so um, so process is something we're paying attention to and it's an, in a way it's it's also a way of saying journey so um, another attribute that shows up so we have principles process and the last one I'm going to talk about is patterns and a pattern you know, and the way I'm talking about a, a primal pattern, so primal principle, primal process, primal pattern, is a uh, perceived structure in the kind of the randomness or the chaos of things. And it requires, uh, it's a way, it's, it's when information is conveyed and organized in a way that we can actually extract some meaning from it. So, um, like I mentioned, if I just took all the constituents of a tree over time, you know, the, the carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and, and water and all these things and just dumped them out in the yard, uh, what? It's, it's just random elements, right? There's, there's really, and mixed them all up, you know, and let it blow around and, and like, there's no tree there. There's no pattern even, you know, maybe at the level of, of uh, atoms, there's a pattern or molecules, but there's no no pattern you know it's not until those things organize into some uh, larger schema some sort of pattern that um, we are able to interpret it you know it didn't wouldn't even have to be tree we could take the same nutrients many of the same nutrients and make other things you know where other things could emerge um, if the pattern was present so it's kind of like the blueprints of things you know so so patterns are, are what we perceive as, as things, essentially. Well, we, we really see phenomena arising from the interaction of these principles and processes that give us the emerging patterns. So they're an emerging thing too, which means they are, they're not there by themselves, they're there because of the interaction of things. And uh, so, um, kind of like if you throw a rock into a, a quiet, pond of water you'll see a pattern emerge right and it's and you know what it looks like it's like these concentric rings of radiating out just like looking at one of these tree stumps here so um and that's a pattern that isn't a thing really you know it's a it's energy moving through water but it creates something that we can see as in looking at it as um as a pattern so so those are some of the um core concepts or the primal attributes of uh of, of nature that we that when we take a primal perspective those are the things that show up in our awareness principles processes patterns just to name a few i mean those are kind of the deep ones the big ones and kind of universal but there's many others so now i just want to add a couple other to bring this back to perspective i want to add um something from uh, Ken Wilber actually from the integral theory and his genius and and that is that you know as I mentioned these things are arising these phenomena are arising uh, and in every moment you know we, we, we're noticing and by the way it is our for our patterning and our um, training and our, our life experience that has helped us uh, perceive the patterns and interact with them you really, you know, as a baby, you know, you're pretty, you can't really function. You, you don't perceive patterns. You're, you're learning patterns. You're learning how, you know, what kind of things you can walk through and what kind of things you can't, what's edible, what's not, you know, what you, what makes noise, what doesn't. Uh, that's just the process that we go through and, and we're discovering all these patterns. So, but what, what Kim, Kim Wilber brought up is this, um, is, uh, he, he descri describes it as, as three, to four, um, you can see it both ways, uh, fundamental perspectives. At any moment, whenever you're looking at something or taking a perspective um, or looking at, looking at something from a perspective or through a perspective, you always have these core or universal perspectives available. And simply, I'm going to do it a couple different ways, but they are the uh, first person, second person, third person perspective. 
And so essentially it is the I perspective. And if you think about that, when I say I, it's a perspective of a internal, individual experience. So that's the experiential perspective. Um, so that, that's here, and that's there for everyone else, you know. And in a way, everything else has an I perspective, even if it's not sentient. But we can, um, we can kind of empathize with it and, and become a tree and think, well, from their perspective. So we have the uh, we perspective, right, which is the intersubjective perspective or the, um, the we space. This is where we have things like um, the cultural and um, even spiritual perspective. So this is the internal collective perspective. And so that's the second one. Finally, we have the it perspective or the objective external perspective. You know, that tree over there, it. And... The cool thing is, and so that gives us the empirical, measurable, scientific, objective world, right? And we can visit all of these perspectives. And Ken Wilber explains we also have an its category, so it's an external collective. Sometimes they mash those together. Um, because I like triangles and circles, I tend to do the <laughs> the uh, uh, three, three uh, perspectives, but um, I also really like the four quadrants, so you'll see both. But no matter what you're focusing on or doing, those perspectives are always available. And often we get pulled into one dimension, you know, we're like stuck in our internal experience and that's the way things are, you know. We forget to look at it objectively or to look at, or to sh look at shared experience. Um, and so those are three of the primary, uh, or sorry, three or four, however you want to look at it, um, whatever perspective you want to take on it. Those are the some of the core perspectives that we're always referring back to. And one of the ways of remembering that or that you'll be encountering that in the Primal Labs here is um, looking at it from a, or looking at a subject. Let's take survival. We can look at it from a um, internal experiential perspective, so your own experience, because you have been surviving for a long time and your DNA has been surviving for a long time. You have uh, body wisdom that is a huge part of your survival, probably one of your biggest things, your, your own awareness, your sensory experience, and then all of your intuitions and, and thoughts and all of that stuff, right? So in your skills, so that's that would be the internal uh, perspective. So that's a very valuable aspect of survival. But we also need to look at survival in terms of traditional wisdom and um, the cultural perspective of what's been handed down in terms of teachings of uh, knowledge and wisdom right and this is where we refer to other people's experience and knowledge and we don't have to learn everything uh, ourselves we can actually stand on the shoulders of giants and not reinvent the wheel and then finally we have um, the it perspective which would be like the scientific perspective so that would give us the uh, scientific method, this, the objective measurable world where we can do tests and uh, see how things work and look at these deep principles in action and um, and it's very powerful. So this kind of, um, these three perspectives relate to later, you know, the, the next video about the uh, primal journey and um, you'll see how that works. But so I just wanted to bring out these, you know, that we have these teachers with us at all time. We'll be looking all times we'll be looking at um, the experiential perspective, the ancestral or traditional perspective, and the scientific perspective. And all three of those, when we use those to look deeply into things, at a primal level, we really um, have a unique understanding that we can carry with us into many fields and, and bring into any practice. You know, And this is where things become universally, universally available to you to be um, used in your life and trans transferred into your life in ways that are uh, it's just it's super empowering and, and magic so so there you go there's a little bit about perspective and the primal perspective and uh, look forward to our next session take care be well and keep going